Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Father God, bless everybody tuning in. In the name of Jesus, glory to God, amen, hallelujah, Lord, glory to God, amen. I've had problems three times trying to upload this video today or doing this live video, so I'm going to try it one more time today. Hallelujah. I can't get it to tag anybody, but I hope to the Lord that people will tune in and will share this message in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to preach about today the person of the Holy Spirit, the person of of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. We got to know the Holy Spirit as a person. We got to fellowship with the Holy Ghost as a person. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Sister Catherine Kuhlman said that if you, if you call him an it, you don't know him. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord. He's not an it. He is the person of Christ. He is the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible said that God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thomas, God bless you. Donna, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me first to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to talk about, first off, about how people are led astray because they're not being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. And I, I don't remember if I've just prayed or not, so I'm going to pray again before I get to preaching. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, hide me behind the cross. There be none of me, but all of you. Speak through these lips of clay. Let I leave here singing, I got just what I wanted and more from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn me to 2 Corinthians 11, chapter 11, verses 1 through five. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chastened a, 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 a chaste virgin to Christ, a, a, a pure virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Amen? The gospel is simple. Jesus said that the gospel was so simple that a child could understand it. But we make the word of God of non-effect because of the traditions of man. We hear people say, well, it, it says this and it says that, and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And we're, we're trying to live by works instead of by faith. Lord, have mercy. I know faith without works is dead. But if you get caught up into some religious cult, to the point that you can't even breathe without it being wrong. Something is wrong. That church ain't got the gospel because he said, He who the sun sets free is free indeed. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, God wants you holy. He wants you to be a pure bride. And I know, baby, that we ain't going to be perfect till we reach heaven. But we are to strive for perfection, we are to strive for the gospel's sake to go after God with our whole heart, not not following any other voice but the voice of God because he said, my sheep know my voice. Amen? And another they're not going to follow. They hear me. They know his voice. 
When God is speaking, they know it. Because if there is a minister speaking something that's not of God, you're going to know it because God's going to put a check in your spirit. You're going to feel a grievance in your spirit. And that's the spirit of the Lord saying, nope, this is wrong. Remember, we are to try the spirit by the spirit to see if it be of God. Are you hearing what I'm preaching? Amen. God bless you, Daniel. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. We've got so many people out there with so many damnable doctrines. The Bible said that in the last days that they would come with damnable doctrines, even as going as far as to deny the Lord that bought them. They'll say things that God never said in his word, and they'll make it seem like it's right and logical, but literally it's leading them down a path of hell. The Lord spoke about that, about the Pharisees. He said, you go halfway around the world and make one convert and turn him into twice the sons of hell yourselves are. Lord, have mercy. Jesus came to give life, not religion. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, living and loving the one that died for you, amen, and rose again. The simplicity of the gospel, God became flesh, Jesus Christ, and he dwelt among us. And then he lived 33 years, born of a virgin, died on an old Roman cross, rose from the dead three days later, and he saved your soul and mine from hell. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Let me tell you something, that we might live with him. God wants a relationship, not a religion. When Jesus came and John saw him, he said, when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. I'm going to tell you right now by the Holy Ghost of God. When John saw Jesus, the Lord was speaking to him. John knew his time had come for one reason. Why? Because all that time up until the time Jesus stepped foot on the Jordan River and the Jordan River began to part as he went into it, one reason, oh, hallelujah, bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. One thing John knew, his time had come to an end. Because, see, John represented the last of the Old Testament prophets. And he he represented those that were doing religious practices, waiting for the coming of the Lord. And he said, this is it. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And he said, behold the Lamb. There's 13 meanings for the word behold. But the one he chose is catch the vision. And then he said it a second time as Jesus was leaving, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the Bible said that, uh, you know, after Jesus came out of the wilderness, that the disciples of John began to follow Jesus because they knew there was something more about Christ than everything else they had tried. You see, they would go as far as they could in religious studies. And the priest would say, you've gone as far as you can go. You're not qualified for the ministry. Leave. Go find a a profession. And they would leave. But Jesus caught them fishing. And he said, stop what you're doing and I'm going to make you fishers of men. He said, follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. Let me tell you something, friends. The Bible says that when... The Lord had the fish get in the boat, that the boat began to sink, and the boats around them began to sink because they had to call for their comrades that was working with them, their colleagues, thank you, Lord, call them together, and the boats began to sink. Why? God was giving, now now see, fish in that day was money. They said, we've told all night and caught nothing. Jesus said, cast your net out into the deep. I know they're asleep in this place, but cast your net out into the deep. So they did, and then God blessed them. Now let me explain this to you. If fish is money, and their boats began to sink, and these were nice-sized boats, 
<laughs> Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. God gave them three years severance pay to follow him. He said, I'm going to take care of you. Just follow me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Before God ever calls you, he's already seen you as qualified because of what he's already done. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> he already qualified you before he ever called you because those who he calls, he qualifies them. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. So many people in the Bible, if we look back on them, they don't look like they should have ever been qualified. But God called them and he qualified them when he called them. They didn't have it all together. They didn't know it all. But they was led by the Spirit of God. The Bible said those, Jesus said in the Bible, those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. We got to learn to be led by the Spirit so we'll not walk in the lust of our flesh. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Well, glory. I didn't know I was going to get to saying all that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. For I suppose, in verse 5 he says, no, uh, verse 4, for if he that cometh preaches a, preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if we, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, ye might well bear with them. He said, "You're willing." Another translation says, you're willing to stay with them, and you heard something different from us. Paul said, you're sticking with them, though you heard something different. I'm going to read that again. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. For I suppose I was not a whip. Let me go back. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. He said, he's trying to get them to think for themselves. He's like, what are you doing? You're tattering you're, you're tattering. You're, you're, um, you're getting your garments dirty that were ready for your wedding day. <clears throat> In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus talks about that, about how they got their garments dirty. He said, I want you to keep your garments spotless. Don't get them dirty. Keep your garments spotless. He said, for I'm coming again for a spotless bride, one without spot or blemish. What does that mean? We got to strive for holiness. Yes, I know we're not perfect. But we got to strive for the cross. We got to strive if we're going to survive. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Verse 5. For I suppose I was not a whip behind the very cheapest of apostles. Let me tell you something. A lot of people are going after the big. They're going after the big things of this world. They're, they're going after what sounds good instead of what is good. They call good evil and evil good. They got it flipped backwards. And they're heaping upon themselves damnable doctrines. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. They got a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Remember the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. Matthew 25, 1 through 10. He said the wise took oil with them for their vessels. But the foolish virgins, this is the same principle right here that Paul's talking about. He said those that were not wise took no oil with them. 
They didn't have no oil in their lamps. And they fell asleep just like the ones that had the oil. And when the bridegroom called, they all, oh my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. They all woke up. But only one set that was woke up was ready to meet the bridegroom when he came. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm going somewhere with this today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready for this now? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Those that were ready went in. But those that were not ready were left out. But, but they said, give us some of your oil. For our oil has gone out. They didn't even have no oil. They were living off of the glow of those that had the glory. They were living off of the glow of those that had the oil in their vessels. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now check this out, y'all. Amen. They said, we cannot give you our oil. The wise virgins did. They said, we can't give you our oil, lest there not be enough for you and for us. But rather, go and buy the oil from those that sell it. Go get your own. Go to church for yourself. Get your own oil for your vessel. And as they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. They were both asleep. The bride that was ready and the bride that wasn't ready were both asleep. And then the bridegroom came at the midnight call. So many think the Lord is delaying his coming. And they were getting awake at first. But now they say, oh, my master delays the coming. I'm going to go back into the world. I'm going to go asleep again. And Jesus said, as they go back to sleep, as they go back into the world, at the hour they think not, the Son of Man comes again. The Lord Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua Hamashiach, steps foot on that, hallelujah, steps foot on that cloud and says, Gabriel, blow that trumpet, and the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the dead shall be raised. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 says it like this. Amen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm talking about the wedding day. How in, how, you might be wondering, how in the world does this tie into what I told you about? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm glad you asked. Go to Ephesians chapter 4, 29 through 30. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, 29 through 30. I'm excited in my spirit today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Ephesians 4, 29 through 30. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, this whole chapter right here, if you go back from chapter 4 and read from 23 on to 32, it talks about how the Holy Spirit of God gives you a new walk. He gives you a new talk. He gives you a new mind. He gives you a new life. The old you is passed away, and the new you is rising up again. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. The old you has passed away. But there is a new you rising. Why? Because Christ came to make in himself one new man. He came to make one new man. Hear what I'm preaching today. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. He came to make one new man. He came to bring the Jew and the Gentile together. He came to restore that which was lost. It said Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Go back and read your Bible. He came to seek and save that which was lost. The worship and communication and relationship with the Father was lost at the fall. And Jesus came to restore salvation. He came to restore relationship with the Father. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Our sins had separated us from, the, from, from, from God. Our sins had separated us from God. But Jesus came to join us to God. Jesus is God in flesh. He came to join us back to God the Father. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. But notice it said, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed under the day of redemption. I want to deal with that just a moment, that word sealed. If you look up the Hebrew word for sealed, it is the word for signet ring. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, a lot of people got beefs because they're so religiously minded, they're no earthly good. They say, oh, you can't wear jewelry if you're a man of God. If you're a woman of God, you can't wear jewelry. Let me tell you something, baby. Do you know it means a signet ring? And do you know that before the bridegroom went away, he gave a present of himself, a signet ring to let them know what house they were coming out of. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. They received a ring in the Jewish bridal tradition to say they're coming from my house. I'm taking them as mine. It's a symbol and a sign of a coming covenant that's about to be made. And they got together and they made a covenant. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Now, let me say this. Do you know, my friends, that the bridegroom would only see the bride for one time in the Jewish faith? In the Jewish tradition, the bridegroom would only see the bride one time. Then he'd say, that's mine. I'm leaving to get things ready. If you look back at John 14, and he says, where I'm going. He said, where I'm going right now, you can't follow. But there's coming a time when you will be where I am. For behold, I go and prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you will be also. And if I go and prepare a place for you, surely I will come again and call you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. Do you know if you look at it this way, and I studied under great rabbis. I thank God for it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But let me explain this to you, my friends. If you read that scripture, it was actually a promise of a Jewish wedding. It was a promise of a wedding day. He said, I'm going away. You're my bride. I'm coming back for you. Let not your heart be troubled, he said. You believe in God. Believe ye also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If this were not true, I would have told you. Behold, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and bring you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. 
Now I'm getting ready to go into the message. This has just been the foundation. Is this pretty good so far? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me explain about the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Jesus. The person of the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Acts 1.8 said he gives you power. He said you will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He said to them, endure. He said, dwell in Jerusalem, tarry there until you are endued with power from on high. The word endued means clothe till you receive your wedding. Ah, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Till you receive your wedding garments, till you receive the clothing power, the clothing power of God. He said, you'll be clothed with power from on high. Tarry there in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. Let me tell you by the Holy Ghost of God today. You can do nothing lest God is doing it through you. You cannot do anything without God. God is the way maker, the heart regulator. He's your savior, he's your healer, he's your deliverer. I don't know who I'm preaching to today. But you need the Holy Ghost. You need the fire of God. You need the presence of God in your life. You cannot make it to heaven without the Holy Ghost. Am I saying you got to pray in tongues to go to heaven? Absolutely not. I know sweet Baptist brothers and sisters in Christ that died and they never had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let me explain what the baptism of the Holy Ghost is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. When you begin to pray in tongues, you begin to speak to the Father. It's the Spirit of God speaking to God the Father on your behalf. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you're praying in tongues and there's other people around you, it's good to have an interpreter, especially if there's a non-believer in your midst. But I'm going to get a little bit deeper here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. It's good to have an interpreter. But he said if you're praying in the Spirit by yourself, you don't need an interpreter because it's God interceding on your behalf through you or even somebody else. He's interceding on their behalf through you. I know personally of, of loved ones in the Spirit that have been praying in tongues and the Lord spare that loved one. So let me explain this. The gift of tongues is a sign that, pe that people have been filled with the Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But now again, let me tell you something. A lot of people begin to become a lot religious, okay? Let me explain this. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. You know, because they were all trying to outdo each other praying in tongues. He said, I pray in tongues more than you all. And he said, I wish all God's children would prophesy, though. He said, but I wish all that God's children would prophesy. He said, if I pray, he also said, if I pray in the tongues of men or of angels and have not love, I am a tingling symbol. He, he said, if I can understand all prophecy." But have not love. Y'all need to go back and read that. I'll find that scripture and post it later. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't know I was going there. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. But praying in tongues is a gift of the Spirit of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
who would ever go to a wedding party, an engagement party, receive all your gifts at one time and only open half of them? Who in the world would do that? Well, I, I, I'm just satisfied with just this little bit. I don't want to open all of it. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Oh, I don't want to open all this gift. I'm just satisfied with a little bit. Now, see, people say, and that's what happens when people don't get the full gift of the Holy Ghost, when they don't pray in tongues, when they don't get the... in. Now, let me explain this. When you get saved, the Spirit of God comes and lives inside you, yes. But he gives you power, even as you're praying in tongues, a power from heaven comes over you. He said that sometimes we don't know how we should pray. That's when the Spirit of God breaketh forth in groanings that cannot be uttered. You can't understand it, but you're praying in the Holy Ghost. You don't know what you're saying, but it's running every demon in hell off for you. It's running them off because angels are being dispatched on your behalf. When you begin to pray in other tongues in the Spirit of God, heaven begins to move on earth for you because you're praying in the Spirit. But a lot of people got their wedding garments tarnished because of one reason. They got into religion instead of a relationship. They got into practice instead of prayer. They traded the upper room for the supper room. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Now, here's an amazing thing for you to understand. They tarried in Jerusalem 10 days when the Spirit came down. It was on the 10th day that the day of Pentecost had fully come. Let me explain this to you. When the priests would go before God, they would be in the Holy of Holies 10 days, and they would be there in the presence of God, and on the 10th day, God would move. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus said before he left, he said, you will be my witnesses. First, in Jerusalem, then in Judea, then in all the other mo uttermost part. First in Jerusalem, then in Judea, then in Samaria, then in all the other most parts of the world. I think I might have messed that up, y'all. Please forgive me if I did. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Forgive me, Lord, if I did mess that up. Amen. I'm not trying to chop nothing up there. I'm just trying to tell you. He said, you'll be my witnesses. What is the word witnesses? Those that could not go in, even at that time, those that could not yet go into the Holy of Holies, they would stay outside the gates of the city, uh, the gate of the temple, and they would listen, listen for the sound of the priest to stop moving. If the bell quit ringing that was on the priestly garment, then they knew the priest had died. But I'm here to tell you by the Holy Ghost of God, thank you, Lord Jesus, amen, that on the tenth day, there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the place where they were assembled. What happened? The priest had made it to the holy of holies, thank you, Holy Ghost, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, amen. The priest wasn't dead. The priest made it through, and they were witnesses that the high priest of heaven was still alive. Woo! Thank you, Holy Ghost, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, amen. That's why they laid down their life for the gospel. Ouch. That's why they laid their, their life down. For the gospel, because they knew that the high priest of heaven 
was still alive. And he had sealed them with the Holy Ghost <coughs> and fire. Amen. Bless your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I might have to do a two-parter on this one. This is a deep study. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. The Holy Spirit is the person of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. In Him we have our life, our breath, our very being. We have movement. We have everything in Him. Acts 17, 28. In Him we have our life, our very being, our very movement is in God. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Do not, this is very important, do not ever lie to the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth. You can't lie to Him. You can't deceive the Holy Ghost. He cannot be deceived. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Acts 5, 3. Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost. And they both drop dead. I've heard ministers out of my own ears. I've been in rooms. And I've left them rooms very shortly. When I heard that, I left. I've heard involving what they've said against the Spirit of God. I've heard ministers blaspheme and joke and make fun of the Spirit of God over his, his name. I've heard them mock the name of the Spirit of God. You know, I tell you something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. This is what I say. If you're mocking the name of the Spirit of God, you're on dangerous ground. I, I mean, you're you're so close to the fires of hell, I can feel the heat coming off of you, is what I'm saying. Don't mock the name of the Holy Spirit. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you why people are so quick to do evil in this generation. Why they're so, e why they're so evil and why they're so lost in this generation because there's no fear of God upon the, uh, upon the ears of those and the hearts of those that say, oh, I fear God, but yet they do the evil that God hates. It's because there's no fear of God in this generation. They've got a form of godliness, but they deny the power. He said in the last days that there's going to be people who have their their hearts seared with a hot, their, their soul seared with a hot iron because they are, they're, they're wanting to have preachers full of itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear and not what God has to say. But I say this to each and every prophet of God, each and every evangelist, each and every pastor, each and every preacher. I, I say unto you, each and every evangelist, I hear from the Lord to say this. When the day comes, he said, if they respond, if they believe or not, they will surely know when that time comes. That a prophet has walked among them. Don't give up on God because he ain't going to give up on you, friend. Surely they will know that a prophet has walked among them. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Spirit of God, as we know Him by these verses alone, by the Ephesians 4 and 30, we know that the Spirit of God can be grieved. Catherine Kuhlman also said, of the Holy Ghost of God. Please do not grieve him. He's all I have. She knew if people were walking in disobedience. Disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. Hear me every minister. Every evangelist. Every prophet. Every teacher. Every preacher. Hear what the word of God says. That the day will come when they know. That there, there, there was a prophet that walked among them. 
You keep shouting the good news. You keep shouting the word repent. Because the time is coming. Noah was a minister of righteousness. He was a minister of repentance. And he shouted for hallelujah. 120 years he shouted at the top of his voice repent. See when God said my spirit will not dwell with man always for he is for, for man is wicked. His days shall be 120 years. That was not a promise of 120 years of life. That was a countdown to eternity. That was a countdown to the judgment day. Hear what I'm saying by the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to not just read the Bible. We got to read the Bible. We got to study, to show ourselves and prove a workman that need not be ashamed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. We cannot live this life without him. Those that are living without being born again, they're not living, they're surviving. They're, they're existing, but they're not really living. We got to let him live his life through us, Galatians 5.16. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We know that the Holy Spirit Convicts in these areas of our life. John 16, 8. The Spirit of the Lord convicts in these areas of sin, of righteousness, and of the coming judgment. He convicts of sin, of righteousness. Sin, to say, you're you're in trouble. You you need a covering. He don't condemn you saying, Oh, you worthless sinner, who do you think you are? I'm just gonna destroy you when you die. No. That's what the enemy's gonna tell you. You ain't nothing but a worthless sinner. You just gonna die and go to hell. You ain't worth nothing. <clears throat> now that's what the enemy will say to you. But the Holy Spirit says, You need a covering. I came. Jesus came and died for you. And he rose again that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come now, I hear the Lord say. Come now, for I am calling to you, says the Lord. Be not afraid, but accept what I have said today. And I will accept you, says God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm not done with the message yet, y'all. I, I just felt like there was a shifting in the spirit and I had to release what God was saying. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He convicts of sin and says, you know you're better than this. Of righteousness. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit of God will confirm to you. You will know in your heart that you're a child of God because the Spirit of God bears witness with you that you've been born again. Can somebody say amen to this or am I preaching to myself today? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Bible said he gives us power over all the works of the devil. The Bible said he's already, dis he, he, he's already dethroned every principality and power, disarming them and making an open spectacle of them. The power of God is greater than whatever you're going through. And I know that if you're watching this message, it's not by mistake. God has sent you here to be touched, to be healed, to be delivered, to be restored, to be refreshed, to be revived in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, not to accept all the gifts, 
earlier, like, like I was saying earlier. Hey, Brother Moore, God bless you. Everybody else, God bless you. Amen. To not receive all the gifts is, you know, those, there are, are some sweet Baptist people. They're going to heaven. They ain't got all the gifts, but they're still going to heaven. God offers us the gift of his spirit. I'm speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now also, let me just go back to this real quick. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He convicts of righteousness. He says, you know who you are in me. And let me tell you, friend, if you mess up and you're a child of God, you ain't going to feel comfortable in the sin you're in because there is something awesome about God. That to the point, because God's seed is now inside of you and you're pregnant with the promise of God, if you're a child of God, you ain't going to feel comfortable sinning, baby. You're going to hate it if you slip up. Oh, Lord, I repent because you feel the Spirit grieving. You're feeling the Spirit grieving in you. And the last thing a true child of God wants to do is ever grieve the precious Holy Spirit. Bless your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. He convicts of sin, of righteousness, and of the coming judgment. He's telling people, now, now that you've been born again, tell other people to repent. God's commissioning you, my friend. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Those he calls, he qualifies. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Go out into the highways and byways. Compel the lost and the dying. To come in. I'm going to tell you something right here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Compel them to come in. Tell them, I once was like you, but now I've been born again. He puts a fire in you. Don't quench the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. Don't let that fire be snuffed out by everything else around you. If God's put something in your heart, do it, baby. Get on your face seat. God, shut the door. Get in the presence of God. The presence of God will get into you and you'll run after God with your whole heart. Amen. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Amen. He says, I've led you to the cross. I'm hiding you behind the cross. Now go and preach the cross. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, Sister Angel. Amen. Mama Heidi's on here. God bless you. Amen. I love you. Praise God. I love each and every one of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. He confirms who we are in the Father. Ephesians 1, 11 through 14, 2 Corinthians 1, 21. He revives us. He, re he, he leads us into all truth. John 16, 13. He is the Spirit of God. Amen. The person of God the Father. And He leads us into all truth. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, here's some truth for you that you might not have known. Here's some truth for you. Prophecy is not done away. I know they say that tongues will cease, that prophecy will cease. That's when we all get to heaven, and there ain't no need in heaven for the tongues. There ain't no need for prophecy in heaven. That's when the final day comes and everybody's made their decision and the final vote's been cast and the, and the gavel has fell. On that day, tongues will cease. On that day, prophecy will be no more. But until that day, it's still in operation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. 
And once the final vote's been cast and the gavels fell, there ain't going to be no more decisions to be made. It's done. On that day, prophecy will be done. But until that day, we are still in prophecy. Because, my Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The only way God is done prophesying is if the gospel's done been preached. And if the gospel's done been preached, what you standing in the pulpit for if you don't believe that? If you believe that uh, prophecy is done, then you need to get out of the pulpit. Because it ain't done. It ain't finished. The work's finished, but the prophecies are still going on. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. He confirms who we are in the Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, those who are of the truth will hear his voice. John 18, 36 through 37. Jesus said that his kingdom was not of this world. But he also said, those that are of the Spirit will hear His voice. Those who are of the truth will hear His voice. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. He reveals all truth. John sixteen thirteen. He is of the King. He is the Kingdom of God. Hear what I'm saying. The Holy Ghost is the Kingdom of God. Amen. He is the Kingdom of God. The Kingdom of God is a person, not the place. The Kingdom of Heaven. The Kingdom of God is a person. Jesus said that all of those who are of that truth would hear his voice. John 18, 36 through 37. Luke 17, 21. We are to seek. Amen. Praise God. He said the kingdom of heaven is within man. Luke 17, 21. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. We are to seek him. Seek ye first, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. It's talking about a person now, amen, the person of the Holy Spirit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is within man. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If we seek him, we will find him. Jeremiah 29, 13. Matthew 7, 7. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6. Jesus said, the, uh, um, uh, Peter said in Hebrews 11, 6, he said, he is and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Those that come to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 and 6. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I, but let me explain this to you. If we seek him, we will find him. Matthew 7, 7. Jeremiah 29, 13. He said, seek. He said, if you'll seek me, he said, you're going to find me. He said, for I know the plans that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts, he said, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts that give you an expected end. Then you will go and call unto me and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He said, those that seek, find. Amen. And to those that knock, the door shall be open. But there is a time limit to seek him. John 6, 37 through 44. He said in his own word, he said, Jesus did. Jesus, the word of God in flesh, said these words right here. He said, Whoever comes to me, he, he said, no man comes to the Father but by me. And he said, no man can come lest the Spirit draw him. 
No man can come to the Father but by me. And whoever comes to me, I'll by no means cast out. But he can only come. There's a stipulation there. He can only come as the Spirit draws him. If the Holy Ghost ain't drawing and God the Father ain't calling, then the Son ain't going to be able to do anything for you because you're not desiring to be saved. But if there's a drawing in your spirit and a calling in your spirit, there's a call from within, there's a call from without. God will send family to reach you. God will send friends to reach you. God will send co-workers to reach you. He'll send the preacher to reach out to you. And still, he'll send the precious Holy Spirit of God. Do not reject the Spirit of God. Do not turn away the tug of God. <clears throat> because he won't deal with man always. He even said that in Genesis chapter 6. He said, I will not always strive with man. My spirit will not always strive with man. For man is wicked, and his thoughts are continually wicked. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bottom line is there's a time limit to seek the Lord Jesus, and that's when the Holy Ghost is drawing. There's a time limit for when God is drawing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you, Jude one twenty four. He is to keep you from stumbling. Yes, we do stumble, but we have an advocate with the Father. He said, Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. John said, I would encourage you not to sin. But if you do sin, if you do stumble, you have an advocate with the Father. One who will go to the Father on your behalf. See, the Spirit is praying for you here on earth. And the, the, the let me say it like this. The Spirit is your advocate here on earth. And the Son is your advocate in heaven. You've got two advocates fighting for you, praying for you. Let me tell you something. Hell don't stand a chance when you've got the Spirit of God praying for you and the Son of God praying for you. Hell don't stand a chance when it comes to accuse you before the throne of God. The Bible said the accuser of the brethren goes before the throne of God ever to accuse the brethren. But he's been cast out now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Holy Ghost is going to give you favor in the courtrooms of heaven, and the gavel's going to fall in your favor. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I felt the Holy Ghost just totally shift the message, and I'm so glad that the Lord gave me this word today for the body of Christ, because he's married to you, my friends. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Now, let me explain this to you, my friend. Some of you may have backslid. You've been married to God. You know God, but you backslid. Guess what? He said, I'm married to the backslider. I'm married to the backslider. A lot of you have gone whoring after other gods. You've gone running around on God with other gods, little G's, gods of this world, the things of this world that bring pleasure to your flesh, pleasure to your own will, to your own way. But God, your husband, will take you back, my friend, if you'll come to him. He don't want to give you a certificate of divorce. He wants to give you back your name at the altar. He'll meet you here today, and he'll do three things. He'll bless you. He'll, he'll meet you. He'll bless you, and he'll give you his name. Come back like the prodigal son. Receive the ring upon your finger again. Be made one with the bridegroom. O oh, bride, be made one with the bridegroom. Again, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. In him there is resurrection life. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead has quickened our mortal bodies. Romans 8 and 11 has made us alive in him. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jude one twenty four. he is to keep us from stumbling. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I'm almost done, y'all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Lord. It's time we learn to live in the way of the Spirit of God. We we need to learn to live in His way, in His will. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. There's nine gifts of the Spirit. Galatians 5, chapter 5, verse 24. There's nine gifts, uh, there's nine fruits of the Spirit. And if you're truly born again, you're going to show those fruits. Jesus said, by their fruit, you'll know they're mine. One is by the way they walk in love, one for the other. By by their love, you're going to know they're mine. But he also said, by their fruit, you're going to know them. And if your life is not showing forth any of this fruit, Galatians 5, 22 through 24, you can go there in your own time and read that. If your life ain't showing any type of fruit, then I'd be checking what tree you're connected to because Jesus is the true vine. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. You don't want to be the branch that's cut off, my friends. He's the vine. We are the branch. I, I think I got that right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Patrick, if I got that right, amen. Praise God. Brother Fitzgerald, if I got that right, he is the vine, we are the branch, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, let me explain this to you. The reason I said what I did about how there's other people who've gone away because of things they've heard and seen and liked better than the, the truth. Let me explain this to you. We need to judge the Spirit by the Spirit. The Bible says, try the Spirit by the Spirit to see if it be of God. I want you to understand this today. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branch. He said, those that don't bear fruit in me are cut off, thrown into the fire. Lord, have mercy. It's time we get connected back to the vine. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me say, let me say this real quick, and then I'm closing. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I didn't know that I was going to preach an hour message today, but glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The only sin that God cannot forgive, here it is, blasphemy against his Holy Ghost. Jesus said blasphemy against me and the Father can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost can never be forgiven. What is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost? So many people have wrote to me and asked me that before. Had they blasphemed the Spirit of God? Let me tell you what true blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is. It's to call his power evil. When you're seeing a move of God and people are saying, oh, that ain't of God, that's demonic. You better make sure what you're saying is of God. Because if it ain't, you're treading on dangerous water. You better watch your mouth against the Spirit of God. You better not open your mouth against Him. Do not lie to the Holy Ghost and do not bring an accusation of evil against the Spirit of the living God. I see all these videos of all these preachers doing this and that. And and, you know, know, people say, well, I, I just don't believe that's of God, what they're doing. Well, that's between you and God, but don't you call it demonic. Don't you speak evil of it. You, you say, Lord, help me understand. Help, give me wisdom, is this of you? Give me wisdom, Father. He said for those that lack wisdom, let them ask of it. He'll give them wisdom. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The reverence of God is the beginning of wisdom. If, you, if you're seeing a move of God or you think it's a move of God but you're not sure, ask the Spirit of God. Try the Spirit by the Spirit to see if it be of God. But don't just automatically say, well, that's demonic. Oh, that ain't of God. There's a lot of people that spoke against William Branham who walked in the Holy Ghost power, that the, the, knew the power of the Holy Ghost of God. And every time they opened their mouth against him, I mean, people died when they messed with the man of God. Because there was one group of people that rose up against Brother Brenham 
And that scripture about blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is in Matthew 12, 32, my friends. But see, they rose up against Brother Branham. But see, when you're standing up against a man of God who's truly living for God in the pulpit, you're not rising up against him. You're rising up against the God that's in him. Oh, you hear what I'm saying, man? I mean, we're not to be put on pedestals. We fall fine all by ourselves. Paul was saying, my love for y'all is going to is gonna be some fault for me. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to hurt me, you know. But he said, you know, you know, I've always said it. Don't put me on a pedestal. I fall fine all by myself. I don't need anybody's help falling. I do good all by myself. But see, a lot of people get disappointed in me sometimes because they, they, they get an idea of what I should be and what they think my preaching should be. And they say, well, I don't like you no more because you shout too much. Well, honey, if you don't like the way I shout, 30 minutes of silence in heaven is all you get. And after that, we're going to be praising God forevermore. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 30 minutes in heaven's all you get, baby, after that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But let me expl explain this to you. This group of people rose up against William Branham or against the authority that God had given him. And they said that um, they had cancer. They went to test the man of God. They said, "We have. I have cancer, one man explained. William Branham stood up and said, you're a liar. And you'll be dead in three days with the cancer that you didn't have that you said you did. Three days later, a man that was totally healthy died of cancer because he lied against the Holy Ghost. God gave that man a chance to repent. William Branham said, you better repent. He says, I won't do it. I've got cancer. I've come to be healed. The man said, you're a liar. You come to test me. But he said, you've tested God today. And he said, you'll be dead in three days. The man dropped dead in three days after testing the Holy Ghost. You better be careful what you call demonic, friend. That's why he's given us the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of discernment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We need to learn to reverence. We need to learn to respect and love and acknowledge him as a person, the person of the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within men. He said they can't say here it is or there it is. For the kingdom of heaven is within man. And God is drawing you and calling you today. You might be lost or backslid. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe you died on the cross. That God the Father raised you from the dead. And I am saved in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me, fill me with your spirit that I might make heaven my home in the name of Jesus. Lord, I accept you now into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you, I want you to write to me. He said, if you'll be ashamed to acknowledge me before man, I'll be ashamed to acknowledge you before my Father and my holy angels in heaven. You've got to be honest with God. If you prayed that prayer, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. I want to send you out a certificate of sonship. Kid Henry, K-I-D-D-H-E-N-R-Y 617 at gmail.com. Amen. I want to write to you. I want to celebrate with you. The Bible said that all the angels rejoice over one soul that comes back to repentance. One soul that follows God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Kid Henry 617 gmail.com. Kid Henry K I D D H E N R Y 617 at gmail.com. I want to celebrate with you. I want to pray with you. I want to send you a love gift of um, material for your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But now let me explain this to you. <clears throat> You're sick in your body. Right now in the name of Jesus, I curse every devil of sickness. I take authority over it. 
By the blood of Jesus, I come against every spirit of infirmity. I curse it at the root, and I command it to dry up and die, but you to live and not die. If there's cancer, I command it to dry up and die, but you to live and not die. If there is diabetes, I command a new pancreas in the name of Jesus. I curse diabetes at the root. In the name of Jesus, every one of the symptoms, one, two, and three of, of diabetes, I curse it at the root in the name of Jesus. I declare a new pancreas in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, I, I command migraine headaches. Somebody been having migraine headaches like crazy, like nonstop. You take something for it, it's still there. It never goes away. I curse the beginning of that tumor in the name of Jesus, and I curse migraine headaches too in Jesus' name. I command it to dry up and die in Jesus' name. Every spirit of stress that's been binding your mind, I command it to loose your mind, loose your body, let you go free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, somebody ain't been able to smell. You've been having something with the issue in your nose, and somebody watching been having had had COVID, God's healing your nose in Jesus' name. You'll be able to smell again. Lord, healing the taste in Jesus' name. I curse COVID at the root in Jesus' name. I declare, my friend, that you'll live and not die in the name of Jesus to declare uh, the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, glory, thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, my friends, Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you are bound up by any addiction, I curse every addiction. I command every issue in the tissue be healed in the name of Jesus. But right now, I curse every addiction in the name of Jesus. I command every addiction, receive an addiction by holy conviction in Jesus' name. Every bondage be broken off of your life in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. I command every heart be regulated in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command every mind be at peace. Every tormenting thought of fear, I rebuke it and I bind it by the Spirit of God and by the power of the Holy Ghost of God. I call you free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember, he who the Son says free is free indeed, according to Nahum 1 and 9. We over, uh, according to Nahum 1 and 9, the attack had not come back a second time. And remember in Revelation, he said that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Do it now. Thank you, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, but you believe every word you've heard today, that it was from the Spirit of the Lord, that God is speaking still today, I want you to get your hands in the air, get on your knees if you're driving, pull over, and just receive the Holy Ghost power in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible said that He, that he breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He said, receive what I've come to give you. And then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. See, the Bible says that. I didn't know I was going here, but in the book of Proverbs, it says that destruction comes before <clears throat> In Proverbs, it talks about how pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. There's a difference between having a haughty spirit and having the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. A haughty spirit is so religious and so worldly-minded. Uh, they're so heavenly-minded, no worldly good, and you, you can't tell them nothing from God, and they already know it all. That's a haughty spirit. You better watch out, friend. But let me tell you, the, the Holy Spirit, He listens, and, and, and you can... You, you can talk to him and he can talk to you. But if you're so religious that you're not even hearing God to the point that if he said something, you're like, you're just blowing it off. You're just like, no, nah, I ain't going to listen to that. You're fanning the words away from your ear. No, nah, I ain't going to hear that. That don't go with my doctrine. That don't go with my agenda. See, I, I didn't mean to get into this, but I feel like the Spirit of God is shifting me over to here before I pray for you to be receiving the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus would talk to the priest and he'd say, he said, you've heard it said of old, but I've said this. See, he said, you've heard one thing, but I'm setting the record straight. Jesus came to set the record straight, y'all. I love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, after everything I've said to you, my friends, if you believe this is from God, that you can still receive of the Spirit of God, Jesus said, talking about the Pharisees, he said, you who are being evil, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father give of the Spirit to them who ask him? You have not because you ask not. Seek the gift. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Paul said we are to seek the gift of prophecy. We're to seek all of the gifts. That's what he said. Prophecy is a lesser gift. No. He said, he who prophesies is greater than he who prays in tongues. The lesser gifts open room for all the gifts. Amen? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, in saying that, God wants you to have the Holy Spirit. He wants you to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It's time to receive right now. I hear God say, now is the time. So if you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, or you want a refreshing of the Holy Ghost and fire, then I want you to just reach out your hands. And first, before I pray this, I want you to pray for the Lord to remove any stumbling blocks from your life. Let go of any unforgiveness. Let go of any hurt. Let go of any anger in your life. And God will fill you with the Spirit of God. Ask him to cleanse your temple. Ask him to cleanse this temple before he comes, makes his home inside of it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Now, if you have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire or you want to refresh in touch of the Holy Ghost and fire, this is your moment now as I'm praying. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. And out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, the Bible says. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Lord, do it now in Jesus' name. Stir up the fire, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Fire. 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 Wash in the water of the Word. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If this message has blessed you, please, please, everybody, share this message if it's blessed you in the name of Jesus. Continue. (laughs) Facebook cut the video. (laughs) Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But what I'm saying right now, in Jesus' name, amen. If you got touched, if you got healed, set free, if you got saved, healed, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, write to me. Let me know what God's done for you. I want to celebrate with you. Kid Henry, K-I-D-D-H-E-N-R-Y, 617 at gmail.com. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Now, if you desire to give we now have paypal or you can do cash out cash tag our full revival your love gifts large or small keep helping us bring this gospel of the lord jesus christ around the world not just here but abroad hallelujah thank you jesus amen and i've even got a worship album that um is on cd it's just instrumental worship is all it is there's no singing behind it It's just instrumental worship. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And 
it actually is the music that I heard when I was in heaven. And Sister Minister Chisholm heard it, and she loved it. She has had trips to heaven, and the Lord touched her when she listened to the CD, and she said that was the same music that she had heard. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus, when I was there and he laid his hands on me to play the piano, he told me, he said, take back the sounds of heaven. And he has, he has gifted me. He's anointed me to play the piano for his glory. And his glory shows up every time. It's not me. It's him in me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. To, to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So if you want a copy of that album to help support the ministry, if you would like a love gift, please write to me. Let me know you want that gift, and I'll send it out to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. See you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. Please share this message. And if you do desire to give, write to me. Let me know. Hallelujah. Write to me mainly to let me know what God's done for you. Amen. You got saved, healed, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. I want to hear from you. Amen. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.